Dogs are great in Elden Ring. One of them is the Pope, and the other ones give you more romantic stamina. The choice to give them hard shells and green skin? Amazing. I don't know if that was George R.R. R. Martin or Miyazaki, but great job. My only problem is that you can't play the game as a dog. Or can you? In my quest to find the most fun build in Elden Ring, I decided to roll up a Teenage Mutant Ninja Canine, specifically Leonardo, for reasons we'll explain later. If you want to watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. We're finding new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Now, let's cowabunga. I move slow and steady. We kicked things off as a samurai, but immediately ditched the armor. I guess I could have rocked the dogs in time samurai outfit look, but the less time thinking about that movie, the better. For once, I do have a reason to fight the grafted scion, but it doesn't go well. Samurai is one of the best classes to try and get this done, with the mighty shot Ash of War and fire arrows dealing decent damage. You can also try and get some bleed going with the Uchi Katana if you can dodge the scion reliably. I can't, it's just hard to fight a boss without flasks, especially with no extra levels. That doesn't count as a death though, so I just wake up in Limgrave, buy a crafting kit, and get a party wagon from Melina. I guess Melina's Donatello? Donatellina? My disgusting dog back is bothering me though, so we hop on the party wagon and find a spirit spring. Not that one. Next one. In the Weeping Peninsula, on top of this little tower. That's where we find the Great Dog Shield. By two-handing our right-hand weapon, we now have a shell on our back. Effectively, doesn't that make the shield worthless? No. As long as it's equipped and on your back, it will boost your stamina recovery. It's like the Grass Press Shield from Dark Souls, but it actually has 100% physical defense. Great dog shield, it's great. Since we're in the Weeping Peninsula, we might as well grab all the items while we're here. Every build kind of starts off with some fetch quests. Slow and steady wins the race. That's the dog and the hare and whatnot. There's a golden seed halfway to Castle Morn. Pick that up. I just run past a knight's cavalry. No need to fight it. And uh, what? It died? We take those. First boss dead. Then three sacred tears. One, two, three. Now we have some errands in Limgrave. There's a stone sword key next to Rodrika, a nice man in a hole. I can dig him out before grabbing the good stuff from the Third Church of America and warping to Grail. Now, Grail errands, grave robbing, and dragon booty smacking. Since we already have the stats for the weapon we're going to use, we get to dump all those runes into Vigor. After a quick dip into Fort Faroth, we can even spend a golden rune 12 to hit the soft cap of 40 right away. Amazing. You can also grab a somber stone 8 and 9 while you're here. They're just kind of sitting out in the world. Neat. Back to Limgrave, it's about time we got a talisman, specifically the Blue Dancer Charm. The Guardian Golem fight is so fast, I break its stance before it even stands up, and then get a nice and meaty crit in its chest. Critting the golem can be a little awkward if you get stuck behind the legs, but the animation and damage is so worth it. Try and position yourself correctly. The blue dancer charm boosts your damage at low weight. Since we're just carrying a medium shield on our back and using a sword, we get around a 12% bonus. Nerd juice is here from the foot plan. We beat him before Splinter can even come help us out. Getting past him opens up the cave to fight Patches. It literally takes two hits before he surrenders and we can come back and buy pickles and the pickle recipe. Then it's time for Lernia errands. Lots of windshield time as we boogie around Storm. Vale Castle, plenty of time to ponder the important questions of life. What if Casey Jones, when he was hanging out with the Turtles once, just walked around pants off? Then smithing stones, silver feet, smithing stones, map, the dexterity tier, more stones, some stones that aren't on the map, a golden seed, and yes, more smithing stones. That'll let us level up the Uchi just in time to get rid of it. In Northern Lernia, there are four belfries you can use to warp to various sections of the game with an imbued sword key. And there's an imbued sword key up top. Specifically, we need to get back to the Chapel of Anticipation and give the grafted Scion some hands. Not like the hands it already we're gonna beat it in a fight. But not before remembering to grab the stamina and charged attack physic tier. Okay, now let's give the Grafted Scion some hands. Since we're like 30 levels higher and we have a plus 14 weapon, this is easier. Who could have guessed? Drops the Ornamental Straight Sword, an absolute must for Leonardo, and the reason we're building him instead of his other dog brothers. Let's demonstrate why against Margit. Two-handing the Ornamental Straight Swords has a unique property that gives you two swords. That lets you have a shield in your offhand, unequipped, but still on your back. Boom! Dog Shell and Dual Wielding. As far as I'm aware, there are no knives in the game that can do this that would let us make Graf, and there are no nunchucks in the game. Fighting with a staff would be miserable, so yeah, Leo's the dog we gotta do. While two-handing, the weapon art coats the sword in holy damage and gives them a unique strong attack, an absolute brutal flurry of stabs. It's kind of risky to use, so I'm gonna save it for when the enemy's stance is broken, since it's actually probably gonna deal more damage than a critical hit. With Margit out of the way, we can run up Storm Vale, but we'll take the short path. It's more dangerous, but more cool. So I will never take the safe path, unless I can't remember how to get the item I need from the danger path, so fine. Safe path, I guess. Gostock locks me in with a wind knight, but is shocked when I rock his block and knock his clock off the block. We get out. 
After making it to the roof, I have a new swag jump to practice. Aim for the bushes. I need to practice because I die. But then I get it in the second try and can spend a stone sword key to get the Maris Scoot, the Mor the Morse coat, the um uh, I can't say it. Sigh. That's for Raph later. For Leo, we need somber stone fours from the rune strewn precipice and another talisman to get us another talisman. It's a talisman chain. We'll get it from the Stillwater Cave by beating a clean rot knight at the bottom. Then enjoy the winged sword talisman, boosting damage the longer a combo goes on. It's really good with a power stance weapon since each attack is basically two. Speaking of one thing becoming two, what if we fought another clean rot knight, but this time there was two of them? In the abandoned cave, there's a gank on the rot floor. We don't have a brother yet, so it's two on one. But I have a sword for each, so it's fine. With that, we get the Golden Scarab Talisman, boosting our runes by 20%, letting us finally get things cooking. So, I talked to Nefeli and summon her for Godric. Let's get ready to rumble. Oh, wait, I forgot to get pickles. Cowabunga. Then we hunt for pickles. It's a little slow, but after getting the pickles, we can get fast and furious. I don't have friends. I got family. Godric time, we're dealing some serious damage. The swords don't have any status effect, they just make ouch happen. Phase 2 lets us get our big combo on while he just shoots fire everywhere. Then I tried it several times without having a really good opening. Didn't work great, but it didn't not work because I won. Now back to the rune stream precipice to bully the bio lizard. Really, it only has one attack that's hard to deal with, the charge. Hopefully it doesn't do it five times in a row. It did, it did it five times in a row. Still won, but boy, that was annoying. Up the elevator to Altus, a beautiful place with a hole we can dive into instead of looking at that beautiful place. We need the somber stone 5 from in here for the ornamental straight swords. There's also a ton of golden seeds up here, so I'll scoop up all of those for more flasks. And as always, demi-human queen Gilka. Her name is longer than her fight. I will never die to this fight. It's so easy. She has no health. Ritual sword talisman acquired, boosting our damage by 10% when we're at full health. Mount Gelmir isn't technically Altus, but it basically is, so I'm counting it in the Altus errands. Right up, Somberstone 6. Now we're ready to take on Radon with a plus 6 weapon. Warp over to the very passable Great Bridge, stop by Jaren's party, and then Radon can come get it. I mostly fight him on my feet, like a goddamn champion. Phase 2 starts, I'm not worried, I just keep the pressure up and eventually get the stance break, followed by a big, meaty critical hit. And the W. First try Radon. Always feels nice. Killing Radon makes a big meteor from Sector X crash into the world. It's a whole thing, but basically it means that we can do the Ronin quest. We do it all the time. Carry a manor. Loretta dies. Insanely fast. We love to see it. Hi Ronnie. Bye Ronnie. I decided to go to Fort Height nearby the big hole for the Bloody Slash, Ash of War, and we get our first non-gravity death from the Blood Knight. He only hits me three times, but they all instantly bleed. Weird, I've killed this dude at level one so many times. Come back, grab it, then back to your regularly scheduled Ronnie quest. That means Nakron, Glove War Fell Bearing, Mimic Tear. Done. Slight detour for the Black Web Blade and the Mimic Tear Ashes, then the Finger Slayer Blade. Interesting little note here, when I warped out, the giant is still down there. That's a nice attention to detail. Okay, anyway. Carrion Statue, Tibia Mariner on the way because it's easy. Carrion Study Hall, Divine Tower of Lernia, grab the Curse Mark of Death, then the Einzel River Main, say hi to Phalanx from Demon's Holes, Somberstone 7, and Glove Wars 8 and 9. Done. I guess I don't finish the Ronnie quest line, but I never need to. We do this like twice a week at this point. We have all the items we need, so I ended the stream, then started the the second stream fighting a putrid avatar for the runes to level everything up. I died once, it's scaled for endgame, and we still don't have armor. But that's only death number four, and now that we have enough runes, we can progress in the game to the place where we can get armor. Maybe the greatest city in the world, maybe! There is a house blocking the path to Brooklyn, hey, you're walking here! The Draconic Tree Sentinel. I summon Raphael, which takes a bit of effort. I have to unequip the straight sword and equip the Morse code knife for his side, then mimic tier so that he only uses that. I can't stop him from taking his shell off his back. I just have to try not to throw up when he does it. Draconic Tree Sentinel is kind of hard, but I figured out his timing, so it's not that bad. Honestly, I think this build is pretty good, but I'm probably just getting better at the game and don't really know how to account for that in the rankings. After everything with Poison Ivy, everything just seems kind of easy. Now we're in New York, baby! and can kill an Erdtree avatar for the Lord's Room. But the more important element is the Lionel armor, which looks a bit like a turtle tummy. Close enough to justify it, and certainly better than Leonardo's current six-pack. Raph did okay in the last fight, but he'd do better with a sharper knife, so we need to dip into the Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel for stones, and a Smithing Stone Bell Bearing when we kill the Crystallion. Then, another Bell Bearing from the Seal Tunnel in Altus. This right here, only time we're going in the sewers for this run. We don't need anything from the Subterranean Shunning Grounds, and I'm never gonna go there if I don't have to. Instead, I'll grab the 
Ritual Shield Talisman for 10% extra defense at full HP, just in time for the Godfrey Shade, which is immune to all status effects. But remember how we don't use those? That kind of makes the shade easier. Kaboom. We even hit the funny number level. Everyone cheer. Then battle a Foot Clan soldier on the way to Morgoth. I, of course, summon Donna Telena. Three dog siblings working together. It's great. Morgoth does have a bloody stab attack in his second phase. He's trying to drain me of all of my blood, even if that kills me. I got the W, but I was scared because as soon as I did, I got hit by a big old swamp blast. It almost stopped me from pickling, but I think I got it off. At this point, we are not only on pace to beat the game faster than any other run. We could come in under five hours for the first time in the channel's history. Which makes sense, other runs are summoning friends. This one is summoning family. Mountain top of the giants is always slow. It's just so big. Something about snow places makes them bigger. Look at Canada. Up the elevator, then scoop up the smithing stone bell bearing three, a sacred tear from the first church of America, the foot of the forge grace, and the ancient dragon smithing stone and final sacred tear. Now it's time for the fire giant. It's just a fairly straightforward boss. Sure, it has a lot of HP, but its moves are consistent and easy to dodge. Except when the meteor attack hits by its feet in phase two, it's not supposed to do that. So we lost some time to that death, but that's still only death number five. We might get less than 10 deaths if we can keep it tight. For Ramazula now, I just boogie. We don't need anything else from here. So straight to the comment section, Grace, pop some bleed on Raph's Psy, and then take on Bebop and Rocksteady. Mid-fight, I realized that I still had the fire resistance talisman from the fire giant fight, so I hot swapped it while Casey Jones and Raph took the aggro. I've also gotten pretty good at this fight. I particularly love rolling into the skinny one's fire spin and getting free hits. Big win. That unlocks the swag jump, most important part of the run. Also, the draconic shield talisman is pretty good at protecting us from physical damage. But running through this this next area is really dangerous. I also love that even though there is a giant dragon that can summon lightning from a mile away, my chief concern is the birds. Case in point! Next time through, I grab the ancient dragon somber smithing stone, scare away the dragon, and stop by the Beside the Great Bridge Grace. We're doing so well on time that I decided to take a detour to kill the demi-human chives, which let us take the cape off the Lionel set. It wasn't mandatory, but it looked kind of weird. Didn't like it. After capping off the ornamental straight swords, we take the Draconic 3 Sentinel out, no problem. Malaketh time. This is, in my opinion, the hardest mandatory boss in the game. Little issue with our swords is that they don't deal a lot of stance damage, and that's kind of the best way to handle Mali. Still, Raph Raphael gets bleed with his size to start phase two, so it's looking good for us. The other good way to handle Malaketh is to just kill him before he can hit you, so that was the strategy I used. Burning down the Erd tree covered New York in ash. How could Shredder do this? I realized I had an empty talisman slot, so I just grabbed the Crimson Amber Medallion plus two for some extra health against Gideon. Didn't need it though, it's Gideon. He's, you know, he's dead. Every boss has been a first try for so long, I was actually surprised when I died against Godfrey. I shouldn't be though, he hits wicked hard. Also, like all the endgame bosses, he resists wholly. I didn't really mention it because it hasn't been an issue so far, but every boss from the Godfrey shade on, with the exception of Fire Giant, has very heavy holy resistance. Our swords deal decent physical damage though, so after a second try victory against Godfrey, I'm confident we'll be fine against Radagon and the Elven Beast. Tonight I dine on turtle soup. Despite being in a hurry to beat five hours, I decided it was worth it to activate Godric's Great Rune. It's five points to every stat, which is ten levels of damage and five levels of holy resistance. That turned out to really matter. Our arcane is below ten. Since that's what determines your holy resistance, we get hit really hard by Radagon. Lionel's chest piece actually isn't all that helpful. Heavier armors are great for physical stuff, but light armor tends to do better for the elements. So I died three times, officially hitting ten decks. Dang. I was hoping I could do this with single digits. That's where I realized that Raphael's Psy were still using the Bleed Affinity, so I switched it to give him substantially more damage. Radagon and the Elden Beast are both fully immune to Bleed, so it wasn't really helping us there. Speaking of the Elden Beast, the next try we finally got to Phase 2. I've gotten pretty good at this fight because I've died so many times to it, although there is still some randomness when the Elden Stars come out. You've got to avoid those, which can already be moving pretty erratically, and then the Elden Beast can send out another move while they're active. Sometimes two moves. God dang it. And we've officially passed five hours. I think we need some training. 
Since there isn't really a splinter equivalent, I decided sparring with April O'Neil is the next best thing. She's feeling a bit under the weather though, so we have to grab some medicine from her dad, Commander O'Neil. We grab it by killing him. He doesn't resist wholly as much as the Elden Beast. I missed that. He drops the Commander's Standard, which I was debating the merits of using as a quarter staff. We could maybe call it that and get Donatello instead of Raphael. Look at this swing. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, man. I, you shouldn't have walked into that. I need to light a torch in Celia to open up the path to April's house. She lives in a church, but the medicine needs to be fixed by Gowry, but we need to quit out and reload for him to finish the medicine, then give it to April, and now she's better, and Gowry's gone, but now she's where Gowry was, and now she's in Altus. They added things to help you track NPCs on the map, but boy howdy, how were people doing this before? Did they just talk to her and then just be like, oh, I bet Erd Tree Gazing Hill. Yeah, I bet that's where she'll be. Before we spar, we have to take out this Godskin Apostle. It's way easier than the Godskin Duo, but apparently we also need to get April's prosthesis. Didn't even know she had one, that's neat. What isn't neat is the Shaded Castle, an area we'll explore more later in an upcoming run. Here's the gist though, Poison Swamp, with perfumers, and a confusing as hell layout. Fun. We give April her arm back, and then we spar. Hi. That was sparring? She rewards us with the Millicent Prosthesis, which boosts combo attacks like the Winged Sword Talisman. It also gives us five more decks. Now we're ready to go get that win. That extra damage is really paying off. Radagon gets got. Then it's time for the Elden Beast. Oh no, it's Elden Stars again. How will the Elden Beast lottery treat me this time? Fine. We get in and get that sweet, sweet win. We're crushing it at 5 hours and 36 minutes, killing 25 bosses with only 11 deaths. That's definitely an S tier, probably the new number one. It's the third fastest and has the least deaths, the best death to boss ratio, and the longest average time between deaths. So how did we do this? Well, the speed probably comes from very low investment time. We found one weapon, invested in it, and we were good to go. We also only needed strength and dexterity for damage, with a low enough equipment load and the dog shell shields to make our stamina decent enough without much investment. Oh, and the ornamental straight swords are just really good. They just deal a lot of damage. They could be even better if we grabbed the physic gear from the consecrated snowfield that boosts combos. It's really, really good. Basically, just find a backup for the Elden Beast and Radagon that doesn't deal holy damage if you want to try this run at home. If you prefer tougher runs though, we're kind of going through it on the next one because I'm not investing in vigor at all. So yeah, go to my Twitch and watch that run live. Support my Patreon if you want to give me some money, sub to my other channel if you like Dungeons and Dragons.